Net. I want to talk a little about the Kuleshov effect. Kuleshov saw editing as more important than acting. You could kind of see how that influenced George Lucas, where he preferred to put the movies together in the editing process rather than actually filming it in a way that was directly emotional on set. This had a lot of perks in movies like A New Hope, but later on in the prequel era, you could say that perhaps it led to some problems. On the interpersonal side, anyhow. The idea of the Kuleshov effect is that viewers essentially derive meaning from a single shot when it's placed with another shot. So in other words, two sequential shots imbue one shot with its significance. Shot A could have a blank face, but shot B gives shot A the meaning and the metaphor. The blank expression of the face in the sh first shot is recontextualized by the shot that follows. As you can see in this footage, he took this Russian actor's face with a kind of a blank slate, if you will, and when he puts uh, some food in front of it, it looks like the guy's hungry. When he puts a dead child in the shot, he looks like he's sad. When he puts a pretty 1920s sexy lady in there, he's all about it. So it really affects how we interpret how the face is read. While shooting A New Hope, George Lucas could have had Mark Hamill get down on his hands and knees crying, My auntie, my uncle Owen, they were all I've ever known. And he could have been in tears and with the sand running between his fingers. But he didn't play it that way. Instead, he let the shots themselves put the emotional resonance in the performance so it wasn't on Hamill to carry it. But I also think, in my opinion, it allowed for Luke to shake it off and get on with the adventure story, where isn't real life, if Luke had seen his aunt and uncle murdered like that, he would have been suffering from some kind of uh, sociopathy or something. But we feel the emotional weight thanks to the shots and the way that they're put together, and also as a little side nudge from John Williams. If you've ever heard Anthony Daniels talk about the first time he ever saw C-3PO, it was in some artwork by Ralph McQuarrie, and he talked about how kind of sad and lonely and the longing in the face that he saw. Well, that right there, it's two people could see that picture and see two different things to it, but that was how Daniels connected to it. But it kind of works that way in Star Wars in general. The face of C-3PO, um, to some extent Chewbacca, the, any droid really when you get down to it, and even the stormtroopers, you can't see what their expression is. It is all contextualized by exactly what has come before and after those shots. The Mandalorian television series works a lot the same way, in that we can't see the Mandalorian's face. So we are in essence assuming and contextualizing the amount of grimacing or glee or whatever the guy's feeling at that time. And when you put it up against something like Baby Yoda, that tends to just make you go, ah, because he's so adorable. It has an in interesting juxtaposition and it allows, I think, for each viewer to decide how intense that performance was. When you really get down to it, for most of the shots, the Mandalorian might just kind of tilt his head to the side because he can't make facial expressions with that mask on. Another good example is when the dark Darth Vader face is looking at his son being murdered by Emperor Palpatine, being electrocuted by Palpatine's force lightning. He looks sad in that shot to me. Before he picks up Palpatine and throws him down the shaft of the Death Star 2, he looks sad to me, but it's the same Darth Vader face we've been looking at. It's just a little scuffed up. It's probably fair to attribute that sadness in the way that the scene is read to the Kuleshov effect itself. You can really see the Kuleshov effect work just great in the original trilogy and in a lot of moments throughout that saga. In the prequel era, I feel like Lucas tried to push that even further. But like the Luke Skywalker scene where he sees his aunt and uncle die and it works beautifully, in the Star Wars prequels, there's moments just like that, but they kind of fall flat on their face at times. So it's not entirely going to work in every single way, and it's not always going to be a positive thing when Star Wars uses it. I'm no film expert. I just came across the Kuleshov effect when I was reading the making of Star Wars a long time ago, and I looked into it, and it was a pretty interesting theory. Then Recently, Slash Film did a pretty good article about The Mandalorian in it that I suggest everybody read. And um, it's an interesting effect. It's an interesting tactic and pretty common today. And it's really used in, in every single way possible and every single thing. You know, they call it montage editing, but it's really just the way that we see films today. So let me know what you guys think, if there's any better examples that you could think of. And uh, we'll have a discussion in the comments. And make sure you subscribe to the channel and like the video. And I'll make another one.